Good day, ladies, enbies, and etc. Beyond my initial successes with Talking to the Targets and Death by Proxy, I'm likely best known for this, my Facts and Features series, in which I educate you guys on the inner workings and interesting strategies of Hitman World of Assassination. Fortunately, at least 95% of the feedback for this series is overwhelmingly positive. Most of you love hearing my facts, and I love monetizing my autism spectrum disorder. Unfortunately, I do get some less than polite criticism, including a few people who think that some of my decisions, like going on a minute and a half diversion to talk about a heart, are a bit questionable for a video that's supposed to be about teaching other players how to play the game better. I could just write a reply to these comments explaining that Facts and Features was never supposed to be purely informational, and I consider myself an entertainer first, so I will consistently choose what's entertaining over what's practical. Alternatively, I can make a new video filled with facts that are 100% useless just to stick it to them. I clearly seem to have found the latter option more entertaining, because this is that video. Welcome to Facts and Features number 9. Due to the natural limitations of developing a game as massive as Hitman, some assets are reused throughout the game, which I like to justify with my own personal headcanon. The Gamma Hospital, for instance, must have gone bankrupt and liquidated all their property after the Soder's assassination, because you can find its insignia all over the place. There's a laundry bin with the Gamma logo in Santa Fortuna. The Race Marshal disguise, associated with the starting location of Miami, has an armband matching that of the helicopter pilot slash drug dealer. And in 47's safe house in Freelancer, he has a tablet with the same icon, though considering the other assets around the house and 47's unspoken kleptomania, it seems just as likely that he just stole it. Much of the music in Hitman isn't actually from Hitman. In Hokkaido especially, a lot of the diegetic music was recycled from Kanan Lynch 2, one of IOI's old non-Hitman projects which took place in China. The music is actually pretty good, so it's nice that it can finally be appreciated within a game that feels nice to play. For all 12 Canon Lynch fans out there in 2023, the rights to the franchise were given to Square Enix when IO went independent in 2017. I don't even know where the ownership lies now, since Embracer Group bought all the old IDOS interactive properties from Square in 2022, which may or may not have included the IP rights to Canon Lynch. Since I've written that previous sentence, Embracer Group has also been facing some financial challenges of its own, so who knows when Kin the Winch will pop up again. Regardless, it's well out of IOI's hands now, so please stop asking them to make a new Kin the Winch game. This wooden box model is all over the place in Hitman, and might be one of the most prolific assets in the game, appearing in almost every level in the world of assassination. What some may not know is that the box didn't make its debut in Hitman 2016. The asset actually dates back to the days of Absolution. Speaking of reuse from Absolution you might not have noticed, Jane Perry is well known for playing Diana Burnwood since Hitman 2016, but she actually made her debut in the series as the tutorial voice in 2012's Hitman Absolution. When you are in cover, it is harder for your enemies to spot you. Items found in the world can be used as close combat weapons, or you can use them to distract your enemies. Throw the wrench at the buckets to distract the guard. As previous tests have established, you exhibit an unusual level of enhanced sensory perception. Back to World of Assassination facts, the climbing animations in Hitman's 1 and 2 were, I think we can all agree, unbearably slow. In Hitman 3, IOI improved upon this by replacing some of the climbing animations and making almost all of them much faster. Except fuck you, because this is actually another Hitman Absolution fact. Some of the new climbing animations are actually repurposed animations from Hitman Absolution with their speed modified. That's right, IOI has tricked all of you into playing Absolution for over two years, and only some of you have noticed. Some NPCs in Hitman wear spectacles. 
If you shoot these, they can actually show a unique bullet mark. Other items can have bullet marks that are quite unusual. Here are just some items around the game that can bleed in ascending orders of scariness. This toilet paper. The stand for the Plague Doctor outfit in Caruso's Observatory. And last but not least, the Scarecrow outfit in Colorado. One useless fact I mentioned in the previous episode was one of the funny side effects of the game's optimization of distant physics objects, and since then, I found another. If you keep a healthy distance away from the catwalk in Paris while watching the fashion show, clothing that would normally be long and flowing is instead clung to the model's bodies as if it's made of sarin wrap. Then of course, as the models get closer, the optimized version of their clothing is replaced with the higher detailed version. Speaking of the catwalk, I've only noticed this embarrassingly recently, so please comment down below telling me when you learned this. For some reason, I've just accepted that the fashion show has railings, balconies, and windows all around it. Because, I don't know, rich people are weird. Maybe they like having all that stuff inside. It's taken me years of playing Paris to actually look up and notice that the architecture is like this because the catwalk is outdoors. Sanguins just put a giant tarp over what would normally be a large courtyard in the center of the palace structure. Let me guess, conservatives? After getting knocked out, robbed, and impersonated by an assassin during the events of World of Tomorrow, Rocco has gotten paranoid as of Patient Zero's The Author. He's placed cameras around his home and even houses the security box for them in his own apartment. There's just one problem. This isn't Rocco. Despite living in the same apartment and playing the same game, examining this imposter closer will reveal that they look nothing like the Rocco we know and love. But examining this imposter even closer will reveal that this imposter is actually an imposter, for if we look at them in contracts mode, we'll find that the person in Rocco's apartment looks nothing like the person in Rocco's apartment, and is actually an old man named Renardo Camerini. Is this an oversight caused by the rushed nature of the Patient Zero DLC, which was likely never intended to be explored in contracts mode? Or is this a double conspiracy, happening in our very own apartment building? In the absence of any further proof, it seems we must default to believing the most entertaining option, so congratulations to Camerini for being even better disguised than 47. Janus and the Ark Society have a musical Le motif that plays in both Whittleton Creek and the Island of Scale. Whenever you approach Janus's house, this plays. This is, of course, quoting the ever iconic soundtrack for the Isle of Scale. I've mentioned previously that diegetic music can continue playing when you pause the game. What I didn't mention is that all but one of those songs had to have their audio boosted. Here's the music in the Kowoon paddock without adjustment. And here's Ave Maria, which plays when you're scoping in with the Seeger 300 Advanced. Ave Maria is naturally louder on the pause screen than all other diegetic music, which I believe is because it's considered a sound effect noise by the game. If you set your sound effect volume to zero, the song stops playing entirely, even if you raise it again, until you restart the level. If you're ever sick of hearing Ave Maria, but the secret advanced is your best rifle, then just reduce your sound effect volume to zero, and then reset it. Speaking of noises made by guns, a lot of people give IOI a lot of shit about the number of reskinned weapons in the game. And while I have my own thoughts on those weapons and those people, it's worth mentioning that reskins aren't actually 100% identical. While everyone knows about the sound difference between the Silver Baller 
and the Black Lily. There are other lesser known guns with different sounding reskins, like the Enrum HV Covert and its Mark II counterpart. There's also the Tac 4 AR and its Mark II variant. The TAC SMG versus its Mark II version. The Base Jaeger 7 and its reskin with the signature Mark II look. And last but not least, the custom 5mm, which comes in stock, ducky, and scrap forms. In addition to these, though neither is properly unlockable, an inordinate amount of time messing about in ghost mode back in the day has taught me that there are two distinct hackle pistols that can be found in Guards in Miami, and then the hackle 9R carried by bodyguards sounds a lot beefier than the Hackle 9S carried by standard security. Though they both deal an equal amount of damage. And on the topic of weapon noises, the Concept 5 sound is still broken. In the previous episode of Facts and Features, I mentioned two railings that are bugged in a way that hides bodies while they're still in the level, and some people commented about other railings with this useful bug. Instead of showing you these, I'm going to show you this railing in Chongqing, which is glitched in the opposite way. It kills any unconscious NPCs thrown over it, and it moves their bodies out of the map, but you aren't rewarded with any XP for doing it, meaning that isn't properly hidden as far as the game is concerned. Fortunately, the manhole right next to the railing can also function well enough as a body dump. These guards in the author are just blind. Seen something suspicious? Ah, you bitch! I'm gonna get you for this! If you steal the outfit of a gardener without a hat in Hokkaido, 47 just conjures one up out of nowhere. The final club mission story ends in an interview with Zoe Washington, in which she interrogates a disguised 47 with a lie detector before he can join the Ark Society. You're supposed to kill her by answering her final question, are you here to kill me, with a lie. But what happens if you do the mission story in an elusive target mission where she's not your target? Were you sent here to kill me? No. False. Yeah, it looks like an accident. Over. Even though there's a finite number of cars put in the game by IO, and they're always going to be the same cars every time you load the level, the plate numbers are only generated upon loading into the mission. This means that every time you restart, every vehicle changes its license plate. It can be nice to set up a kill and get a head start on your exfiltration, but a little caution on the way out can't do you any harm, especially on New York, where Athena Savalas can Speaking of leaving New York, Milton Fitzpatrick has not just one, but two exfiltration themes. A plane variant for most exits, and a special version for leaving with the data core.
Briefcases are automatically marked on your map to make sure you can't lose them, but the game doesn't distinguish between briefcases that are 47s and ones that are just around the map, so every briefcase is always marked, even if it's being carried by someone else. Theoretically, this could be used to track the lawyer in Mendoza, but when was the last time you even thought about him? Silent pistol illuminations act a bit weird when you're using a fully automatic pistol. Last episode, I mentioned what's possibly my single most favorite useless feature, the infinite punch loop, but I neglected to bring up that if you engage hand-to-hand -hand combat by fake surrendering or interrupting a frisk, no guards will shoot at you while you're fighting. This can actually be a bit useful, because it allows you to prevent guards from shooting you until they've backed off to get cover, at which point you can do the same. Beware though, if you wait too long, the guards may have gotten more reinforcements than you can handle. If you enable interaction highlights in the settings, you can see what object you're placing an item on in placing mode. This doesn't just apply to normal objects, but also to the pieces that make up each level's floors. Just look at all the pretty little chunks that someone at IO had to place to make the sidewalk look appropriately worn down and inaccessible to wheelchair users for an American suburb. If you kill an essential NPC, like the Constant or Diana, it is possible to continue playing the mission after their death. When you're about to fail, simply repeatedly enter and exit your inventory. If your timing is right, your inventory screen should cover the failure screen. Then you just need to hide an item inside the case, and you're back in the game. When you're in this state, your audio is fucked, you can't leave even if you finish the mission, and if you die, guards will continue shooting you until you restart the game. Thank you to Agent Scorpion for finding this glitch, and Volvo Modus for making a short video on it. It's awful, and I love it. And last but not least, the Striker and all its variants are 100% accurate. Their bullets will always hit the exact center of the screen, as long as you're aiming down your sights. I'll be honest and say I don't know exactly why this is the case, but I choose to believe it's because it makes the Striker the most consistent weapon in the game, and therefore desirable for speedrunning, which is hilarious. It's definitely an improvement over Hitman Absolution, where all semi-automatic guns always hit the exact center of the screen, even when blind firing. But once you figure that out, the shooting still feels terrible because the screen itself moves when you aim. But with that, I think I've given you guys enough facts and complaints about Absolution, at least for now. I plan to upload more videos soon, but I still haven't figured out exactly what they will be, so until then, I will also be on Twitch and Discord. Watching me is a great opportunity to possibly pick up some more facts and features that I may remember. I'm also proud to run what I believe may be one of the most welcoming and diverse spaces in the Hitman community, and we're looking into more events and challenges to run in our Discord server, so stay tuned for that. Both of those will be linked below. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I've been Cassie, and have a nice day.